Hello, I'm Joanne Bauer, welcoming you to Art Talks. I'm very honored this um, time to have with me my guest, Maurice Robertson, who will talk about music and art. And then we have two other guests who are very involved with music also, and that would be Karen Bachman of the West Hartford Women's Chorale, and she's brought with her the music librarian of the group, who is Robin Doyle. So these are my guests, and we will actually we'll just start right in. So Karen, you are, I believe, one of the co-presidents of the West Hartford well, Women's Crowd. I'm the only president, but I'm a co-founder. Yes. A co-founder. So yes. that's even more important because we can talk a bit about the history. Yes. Now, was I reading that you began in 2004? Uh, halfway between two, yes, 2003 in the spring. Okay. We had a concert with 14 initial singers, and it was, I think, 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but by the next December, right. we now had about 25 singers, Excellent. and uh, we had a real concert. I mean, you know, one that you could call a concert. So when you say you were one of the founders, I'm going to assume that partly this was an idea of yours. Or how did it, how did it come huh. to fruition? Well, the other co-founder and I were on a trip in uh, Ireland with a group of people. And there's so much music in Ireland, and we're singing along. And we said, gee, wouldn't it be nice to come home and have somewhere you could sing? Not a church, but, you know, other right. kinds of singing. And so we um, said, well, let's found a chorale. And little did we know what we were getting involved with. But um, yeah, we found a good woman who, was, who became our director and led us forward. And then five years later, when she left, uh, we had to find another chorale leader. But then we found our present, who's in his fifth year, our present music director, Ethan Nash. Right. And so he's a professional. He, they were all professionals. Both, mm -hmm. All of them have been. And our goal, as we wrote it with our mission statement, um, now I think we're six years or seven years as a nonprofit because we did move in that direction. Um, <clears throat> is to promote uh, singing and music education around vocal singing, but but in a professionally led environment where women mm -hmm. who do not have to audition to be in our chorale mm -hmm. can experience that kind of an experience. Mm -hmm. It's a we choose a lot of different music, a really wide repertoire. Uh, from really high classical to jazz, um, I don't know, folk, right? Some folk music. Folk, pop, pop Broadway. Um, Broadway, and a little bit of everything. Yeah, recently mm -hmm. we had some '70s music that we remember, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, but our, our 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 music director's love is really for classical pieces mm -hmm. that can be arranged or that arranged for women, or that come from roots in women's singing, which is hard because most singing was done by little boys back in the Middle Ages. So I'm curious, and I'd like to hear you talk about why women or why only women. <laughs> well, I mean, he maybe that's it. just <laughs> obvious. Maybe that's just obvious. Well, you know, when you go to uh, a chorale concert, my feeling is the men overpower the women, the women's voices. Mm -hmm. And there's some really lovely subtleties about women's voices, which I've come to learn about over the 11 years, that I'm really proud we can showcase. Also, it's the community aspect. Our chorale has become really unique in this, its supportive nature of the women who come in and out. And um, each year, we open our arms up, and we receive new members. We're up to 75 wow. singers now. But through the years, people have come and gone, so we've reached hundreds of women. and they're all very appreciative to have this place to feed their souls. Do you know, I have to say that that's obvious. I've come to a number of your, yes. your events and performances, and it's, 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 it's dynamic music. It's such a, a, um, an eclectic mix, really, and I, I love it, you mm -hmm. know, and there's music that I want to bounce. Well, actually, I bounce around to almost <laughs> all. <laughs> but I have to say that, so from the time I was in third grade, I was convinced that I couldn't sing. So now I'm curious, what might you be able to do with a woman who comes to you like me? I mean, you say that there's no auditions, no. but... but so, so many people feel that they can't sing, but 
perhaps because they've never been encouraged or they've never really, you know, there's, there's a little bit of courage involved in mm-hmm. stepping out there and opening up your mouth and, and letting right. your voice enter the public realm. So um, I think once you start to do it, you get a little addicted to it. And once uh-huh. you, with the guidance of the music director um, and the support of the women around you, uh-huh. You, may, you may find that you're a and better singer than you think you are. And the yeah, and mm-hmm. the breathing, right? Mm-hmm. He's every every um, chorale rehearsal is like a music lesson. For sure. He's mm-hmm. always re- rehearsing over breathing mm-hmm. techniques, ways to get the sound in a better mm-hmm. place in your head, mm-hmm. singing in your mask. He has a little, <laughs> he has that, um, maybe you've heard of this, Maurice. It's a little exercise where he gets us to do that mm part of, a G, like a sing, to get to the G, mm-hmm. and then he says, hold your nose, mm-hmm. and if any sound comes out, you don't have the sound in the right place. Mm-hmm. He's got a million tricks like that. A lot that. of tricks oh, to I teach you it. how to sing yeah. properly, yeah. which is, you know, part of the battle, I think, if you haven't learned some of those techniques, and it's right. it's not very right. technical. You don't need to be a music professional no. to be able to do those things. You just need to learn about Follow them. Follow the instructions. So We have a, a rehearsal CD, too, that we provide oh. all the women so your parts are laid down so mm-hmm. you can physically go home listen to the music in the tempo it's supposed to be and hear your part and it's not electronic music it's physically played by our accompanist so each semester we provide one of those and that's a great support for people who are oh, it is. most people in our chorale have sung somewhere but maybe not since high school right mm-hmm. and then we have some well, Robin's one of them. We have some really beautiful voices. Yes, you have some that yes. rise to another and level. So you do want to talk training. a little bit about that option for, for women who sure. are um, more professional? It, the Corral overall is a non-auditioned group, but we have a, a smaller group within that mm-hmm. called Camerata, mm-hmm. and that is an auditioned group. Okay. So every, every fall, he auditions anyone who is interested in joining the group. Mm-hmm. He holds auditions, and he selects... Uh, 12 to 14 women depending on what type of people audition and four parts and we sing um, some music that's maybe a little bit more technically difficult but also maybe more suited to a smaller group versus the 75 and um, all the women that are in Camerata are also in the larger group so we're we're part of that support structure for the women that sort of depend on the stronger singers absolutely and, uh, that's important yeah too. so and so it's, it's a good option for women that maybe are a little bit more experienced, mm-hmm. um, that they feel they have that outlet as well as right. doing some of the slightly easier music that the larger group does. And then at various points you get highlighted, you're, you're highlighted. Right, so that. our concerts always feature, you know, three to five songs that just the Camerata performs. So I have lots of questions, but before I get into some of them about how you, you support music education mm-hmm. and younger women mm-hmm. and so forth, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that we talk about the upcoming events sure. and the events mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. that you're going to be involved with in New York City. That's so exciting. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll start with the February 22nd okay. um, program. That is actually called The Events. It is an original play by um, hmm, David Gregg, or Grieg, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but it it is a play written, it's a fictional story written about a tragic shooting that took place in the past in a um, community center where a choir was involved and many of the victims were the choir. Mm -hmm. And the play itself, the part on stage, is the um, choir director and the boy, the shooter, who also performs other roles but she's trying to figure out how to heal from this and asking yes. all those hard questions yes. about violence and why does it happen and who was that boy and why did he do this and so the the real substance of the play takes place with those kinds of questions and dialogues but that but we are on stage the whole time and you were invited we were invited we we performed in New Haven um, Festival of Arts and Ideas yes. in June. It was the U.S. premiere of the play. And it was the U.S. premiere oh, of the play. Really? Yes, it's coming from uh, Denmark. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or Sweden. I Sweden. think Denmark. Oh. Sweden? Sweden. I think so. I think yes, you would be right. Or Norway. It's Scandinavian. All yes. the people mm-hmm. involved are Scandinavian. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, it's loosely based on an event that happened in 2010 in Norway where a music camp of students 
were um, massacred. Right. Oh, and about yes. 70 yes. students yes. died. Right. Right. Um, so it's loosely based on that and his the playwright's awareness of the whole country trying to heal from mm -hmm. it. And that did take place in Norway. Um, but anyway, we went to New Haven, and from New Haven we were invited to come to New York. That's and an we honor. have a much larger group going. Um, we're really thrilled to go. They've made some changes in the music and the play, and that's pretty interesting to see. And, and you know, I saw it in New Haven. Oh, you did, I did. see it? Mm -hmm. when, did we did, see when we were yes, singing? Yes, for the Arts and Ideas It was Festival. pretty moving, wasn't it? Oh, my it? goodness. Mm -hmm. It's an incredibly topical piece. Mm -hmm. Do you Unfortunately, know? it's... Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right? exactly, yeah. and it's so moving, mm -hmm. and there are so many layers to yes. it. You know? Yes, very much so, yes. One of the interesting aspects is that they, to some degree, keep the choirs in the dark a little bit oh. about what oh, exactly right. is going to happen they so that you. you have a very natural response as the play unfolds. Right. So Karen participated oh. in the New Haven uh, play and I did not. I was not in town then so I did not. So this performance in New York will be my first time mm -hmm. and I'm sort of staying with that tradition of not, not reading too much too about much. it, not asking too many questions so that I can just go and experience mm -hmm. it. So it should be interesting. Oh it will be. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very quite exciting. Moving. It really is. So that's it's February 22nd at 2 o'clock at okay. the New York. That's a Sunday? It's a Sunday. Uh, New York Theatre Workshop in New York City. So we're pretty excited about that one. And then we have one more uh, program coming up. I'm going to ask Robin to talk about that. That's in March. Okay. Could I first ask you, if somebody wanted tickets to the events? They would need to work fast because mm -hmm. it's a small theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they could either call or go online to the, I think it's NYTW.com. Okay. And you Is can go to the... Oh, it might be org because it is a nonprofit organization. Okay. Yes, and um, so and you can buy tickets at their you website. can buy tickets at their website, NewYorkTheaterWorkshop.org. Excellent, mm -hmm. and that's the twenty second at twenty second at two o'clock in Manhattan. Yes. But tickets are going quickly. Yes, so you mm -hmm. have to get them right away. <laughs> yes. Okay, and then in addition to to that, you have what else coming up on March twenty eighth? We have our second annual Festival of Women's Voices. And what we do with that is we like to bring different female vocal groups together to collaborate. And uh, for our first one, we uh, had a, a charitable benefit factor, which was uh, My Sister's Place. Yes, in which, Hartford. In yes, Hartford. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. which supports women in need. Um, so, so the uh, the uh, donations went, went to, to that charity. That. Mm -hmm. Right. So... But, you know, a lot of the fun is really interacting with the other women's groups. And, and you have some students, right? Right. So we have another adult group. Uh, they're called Another Octave, and mm -hmm. they're out of New Haven. Mm -hmm. And they're very different from us. They have really more of a folk style, um, a lot of a cappella music, mm -hmm. and, but really great, talented singers. Mm -hmm. And then what's really enjoyable is to incorporate some student groups. So we have uh, student groups from Hall High School in West Hartford, um, Glastonbury High School, which is where our artistic director is the choral conductor, and uh, so from Simsbury High School. Mm -hmm. So, so and, it's and I did go to the event last year. You did. Oh, you did. Yes, you I like did. Thank you. Thank you. Why I invited you Thank here. You. Thank you. Impressed with with what you do, and I love that you had the, the students mm -hmm. and the adults mm -hmm. and working together and it's really you know the really. voices really sound so different but the blend of them is is really it's very it's very dynamic to sing yeah. in that large group mm -hmm. too yes we incorporate students in our formal concerts as well we have student musicians which you may have seen depending on the concert oh. you went to mm -hmm. but we'll have string musicians uh, we've had uh, brass players um, 
And it seem, it, I noticed on your website that students 15 and up could yes. be part of the yes. crowd. And we have right? had, we've had yeah, a we've handful had, yeah. of, of young singers join oh. us over yeah, the years. For more so. experience with singing. Yeah. So I want to now just switch to Maurice, who also mm -hmm. is quite involved, as we know, with the music scene mm -hmm. in, in Hartford and internationally. Yes, I get around. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you but, for the opportunity to oh, share my... Uh, background in photography and arts and music. Thank well, you. you know, Maurice, the, your photography and your interest in music mm -hmm. come together. Yes, Do you want to talk a little bit about how that happened for you or how it expresses? Well, I uh, was blessed that we're from the West Indies, but my father had a great love for all types of music. Oh. So I grew up hearing from Motown to jazz to calypso to reggae. And uh, it worked. I mean, I had a great uh, background with different types of music. So when I went to college, I got into radio and I started doing a jazz show there. My father, he would document all the family events. He wasn't a great f photographer in the creative sense, but there was always a camera around. So I guess subliminally, all these mm -hmm. things came together. So in the late 70s, I acquired an Instamatic and I was <laughs> running around and, you know, shooting musicians and some nature, you know, um, but primarily music. And mm -hmm. then I finally got what I call a real camera in 83, uh, mm -hmm. my first uh, SLR, uh, Fujika. Mm -hmm. And I've always had this love-hate relationship with new technology, so it sat in a <laughs> box for about three, four oh, months. I, understand. I would rather use a little Instamatic, go figure, mm -hmm. right? That was so erratic and, you know, but... But it was know, what you were used to. Yeah, yeah, folks get comfortable, but I said, you know, yeah. finally, let's take this out of the box and get, get out, out of there. Get out of your comfort zone. I, exactly, <laughs> you know, and I'm from the school of trial and error. I haven't had any formal... Uh, art or photography classes. I've had area mentors indicate uh, things I sh could do to improve. And, and in a sense, I'm kind of glad I staggered through because you really begin to learn and pay attention to light and aperture and you know shutter speeds and things of that nature. And flash forward, I'm now using digital cameras and I've uh, really uh, expanded my vision. Uh, you know, as you get over a certain age, your eyes begin to do interesting things. So <laughs> autofocus helps quite a bit. <laughs> but getting back to uh, documenting jazz, you know, I've just always had a great love affair with the music and not just jazz, but uh, it's America's greatest art form that still goes, uh, unfortunately, very undersung in this country. The appreciation and the financial support and the respect it should get, considering how uh, spiritually elevating uh, mm -hmm. good music in that genre can be and how stimulating to uh, progressive activity and so forth. Now of course people who know you Maurice would mm -hmm. know would connect you right away with the Hartford jazz scene with jazz in yes. Bushnell Park. Yes well it, that's a recent uh, activity. I've been on the air quietly since 1976 as a volunteer at the University of Hartford. I used to have a show at Trinity as well. And, and say mm. when your show is. Uh, uh, actually on Wednesdays 9 to midnight. www.uh.org 91.3 so anywhere on the planet whatever device you have you can hear us mm -hmm. if you care to. We're in, uh, public radio station uh, based at the campus of the University of Hartford and we have a greater way of public affair programming as well as music of all genres and we have 27 hours of jazz uh, wow. programmed a week 9 to 12 Monday through Friday mornings and Tuesday through Friday nights 9 to midnight and a blues show on Monday which is like the foundational music of what's happening in this country as it goes so the, everything kind of like melds together, you know, I help uh, promote the art form, uh, I'm in the audience, uh, I help produce some of these concerts. I've been a volunteer with the Jazz Society since uh, 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, we have assumed the responsibility of putting on the Monday Night Jazz Festival, finding the funding, finding the acts, and all the infrastructural activities that go into producing concerts. And uh, Well, that's why yeah. one person in print called you what omnipresent on the, mm -hmm. in the jazz scene, mm -hmm. and and I know that this is part of how you 
climb under with your, you know, your mm-hmm. life well, body, yes. your mm-hmm. yoga body. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're talking about a bit about attempting to be nimble, and people don't pay to see me in front of the bandstand. <laughs> right. But so, so tell us a bit. How? Mm-hmm. What would you like to start with? Well, let's we start with your, the music yes, stuff. Yes. Okay. This is uh, a wonderful Cuban pianist, uh, Omar Sosa, who's uh, very, he's excellent. I now had look the, at this. The light. Mm-hmm. This is just magnificent. Thank you. This is shot at the Blue Note, the celebrated jazz club in. Uh, Greenwich Village, mm-hmm. New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've interviewed Omar twice, and last year they were on a tour, his uh, new quartet. So I was able to uh, interview him and present it at WWH, and uh, they were uh, kind enough to give me a pair of press passes to come see him in New York, as well as a photo pass. So I was able to get some wonderful shots of him and his quartet in action. And I shoot with available light. Now, most venues will throw you out of there if you use flash. It's very, in a sense, uh, distracting yes. and can be disrespectful depending on your relationship with the artist. Some tolerate it, but when you're in an intimate environment and if you really know what you're doing with your camera, uh, usually stage lighting is more than adequate. Um, so this well, is this Omar is, Sosa. This is just so magical. Thank you, and I, I'm printing now. I uh, uh, invested in a Epson uh, color printer. I can do my own enlargements up to 17 by 22 inches. So I'm attempting to get my darkroom skills together. And you have a studio in your home. Well, you can call it that. Uh, an well, elaborate bed- that. bedroom uh, hookup. Because, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. because you are oftentimes on the open studio tour at mm-hmm. your home. Oh, yes. And you yes. do some weekend Well, I turn my apartment into uh, my gallery space. The work doesn't come down. I live amongst it. So it makes, it makes me keep my, my home neat <laughs> in case a patron <laughs> pops up, you know, outside open studio. You know, I attempt to uh, generate some foot traffic, you know, and some months are better than others, obviously. And, you know, I want to, before we look at the other pieces, I want mm-hmm. you to say where you have gallery shows All right, currently, yes. yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, currently, I'm in a group show with... Uh, Five other artists who have documented the Hartford Public Library's uh, long running now. A lot of people are amazed, but 11, 12 years, their Baby Grand Jazz That's series great. has been going on. Yes, it's you fabulous. Know? It yes. Is. And it's free. Exactly. Yeah. And they bring some very serious musicians, both Connecticut based and out of New York, and some have international reputations. In fact, the first one had the renowned saxophonist Kenny Garrett in 2004, who did his first public piano recital. Wow. What? He's really? a noted saxophonist. I saw him with Miles Davis in the wow. 80s, and he used to play with Art Blakey. He's uh, probably in his 50s now. In fact, he used to come to Hartford to the old 880 Club and mm-hmm. jam on mm-hmm. Thursdays. Um, so uh, currently, myself and these five other artists are on exhibition there on the second floor. This is the downtown branch yes. until yeah. the end of the Baby Grand Jazz series, so either April 28th or the 30th. Nice. Oh, so great. So in conjunction with April. the Sunday concert, you can go up to the second floor. And I might add, all floors are laden with serious artwork. That is yes. so true. There are some fabric workers who have done uh, work inspired by the new Romar Beards that yes. uh, they're on lease or, I don't know, lent to the library. Yes. So they have some wonderful jazz-inspired quilts upstairs. Yes. And so you have the third floor, and then, you of course, have Art Walk. And we're on the second floor, and we're up until, as I stated, uh, the end of the concert run. Absolutely. And simultaneously, I'm in Windsor at a cute little uh, jazz art Java coffee house space uh, run by the singing dentist, Steve Lippman, <laughs> and myself, uh, jazz painter Andre Shaparo. We just opened there on January 8th, and he has some wonderful jazz abstracts. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little more freewheeling in that show. The work at the library is more documentary, uh, per se. Uh, I was the one who was blessed to have the earlier shots, you know. So there was a more functional, but the show out at uh, Jazz R Java, you get a chance to see my more abstract and some of my uh, other work. Different from pieces that you have here or somewhere? Uh, well, uh, just to say another aspect. Another I, uh, aspect. Since I'm in conjunction with Andre Shaparo, who is like in abstract expressionist mode, Michelle, Michelle Basquiat, that kind of thing. I figured I could pull out stops as well. So I have (laughs) some of my more mainstream looking portraits and some of my standard bearers and I have some newer experimental work that I printed in that show. So can we talk about 
Um, oh, let's talk about your black and white for sure. Oh, I sure. Want this is a, another this piece one. that I printed with my new Epson. This is a fine tenor player. Uh, he was extraordinarily rich in his performance. This is uh, J.D. Allen. Uh, I'm talking about the Jazz Society. Our fall concert featured his trio. And this gentleman, he's quietly in his early 40s. He has a robust sound like John Coltrane, and then he can play wonderful ballads. And uh, a local drummer, Jonathan Barber, who we've watched just blow up as a young drummer. He's maybe 25 now, living in New York, was part of his trio. Wow. And it, it just fabulous music. And so I love shooting black and white. It's a, a timeless look. It is, uh, I yes. love shooting color, but sometimes color is a way of distracting, in a way. Yes. And black and From white just, structure. yeah, black it and white is just does. cuts to the emotional mood and you know, just those tones, you know, and so, and I like to get up in folks' grill, you know. Yes, that's what, uh, that's what that I looks mean, like. I mean, you know, yes. some of the, you know, usual portraits are a little shy. I'm not shy. I mean, you know, um, I like to get up and so you can see what's happening and feel what's happening. I'm developing a, a more uh, intimacy I'd like to generate with my work, and I, I think that it kind of brings you. Yes, and that's what we want in the mood, you know. It's a meditation going on. Uh -huh. You know, this show goes so quickly, and we're almost out of time. I'll we'll mm -hmm. have to invite each of you back again sure. sometime. But I want to ask you to identify where people can get in touch, the, in other words, websites or mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. to contact you and you. Sure. Well, Facebook, uh, Maurice D. Robertson. Okay. And if folks can remember, uh, Donaldo Jamaica at yahoo.com is mm -hmm. my email address. And I'm more than happy to, you know, share, you know, experiences that way. I have uh, numerous albums up at my Facebook site, new stuff and announcements of where I'm at All currently. Right. You know. Yes, and you're good about keeping people Oh, in I'm touch. A, a scribe. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and the Women's Corral. The West Hartford Women's Corral has a website at whwcorral.org. And you can uh, contact us at the website. Uh, Karen will get your, <laughs> Karen answers all the emails, so Karen will respond to you. And, and uh, may I just say that I know you look for volunteers, sometimes you look for donations, you look for, in, in addition to mm -hmm. women who could join your, your group. Definitely, anyone who'd like to do anything for us, we're really interested in hearing from you. We always Excellent. need some help around promotional mm -hmm. things and artistic development of our promotional materials. Wonderful. We are also on Facebook, West Hartford Women's Corral, and we now have a few selections on YouTube. Hopefully, we'll have mm -hmm. more oh, soon. Cool. Mm -hmm. But you can, they're mostly off of people's um, cell phones. Cell phones, <laughs> but they're okay. They're respectable mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people can hear from you. Thank you so much for joining sure, thank today. You. This is, again, our talks, and I'm Joanne Bauer. Thank you to the uh, station, West Hartford Community Television. Mm -hmm.